As many of you know, there's a popular prosperity teacher who had just backtracked his teaching on tithing after teaching it the way he had taught it incorrectly for over 30 years. Uh, not to give this man any kind of notoriety or any more than he already have. I'm pretty sure if you're in the Christian community, you know exactly who I'm talking about. Uh, I don't want to spend time dealing with this person. I really don't. Uh, there are ministries out there that do this already, such as Justin uh, Peter's ministry that specialize in this sort of thing. But this person is the gift that keeps on giving, and I will be derelict in my Christian duty not to tell you or warn you about this uh, the doctrine that this person is peddling and tell you a little bit about this mm, confession that he that he has come forth with. Uh, uh, so uh, I, I want to focus on this. Uh, it's just too much meat on the bone to ignore. Uh, I, I'd rather spend time in his ministry talking about other things, teaching uh, scripture and godly principles and, and things like that. But there's so much here to dwell on in just a little bit over a minute of a of, of video that uh, I, I could not ignore this in good conscience and, and call myself a, a Bible a teacher or an, an instructor, instructor in God's word. So let's uh, talk about repentance, confession, and restitution coming up next on Scripture versus Scripture. We'll start off by saying to you that I'm still growing and that the teachings that I've shared in times past on the subject of tithing were not correct. And today I stand in, in humility to correct some things that I've taught for years and believed for years. Okay, this is the good. Repentance is good. Uh, it's especially hard to repent after you have taught something incorrectly for, again, over 30 years. And to uh, humble yourself enough to say, hey, I was wrong. Uh, I taught this incorrectly. It is a good thing. But I could never understand it clearly because I had not yet been confronted with the gospel of grace which has made the difference. Okay, now this part is the part where we have some very, very serious implications here. Very serious implications. And what do I mean by that? This part is where he had just admitted that he is not, or was not a Christian. I don't know if the gospel of grace has entered his heart now. He accepted Jesus Christ on the merits of grace and not works. But all this time as he has pastored a church, he was not a Christian. Why? He didn't understand the gospel of grace. Understand that the gospel of grace is the very first thing, step to being a Christian. Understand that you are a sinner in need of a savior. Jesus Christ is that savior and by grace that you are saved. Not of your own or works. Not because you're tired a lot. That doesn't save you. Okay. He just admitted that he was unsaved. Uh, when we go to the Bible, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says this. 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works. Doesn't matter how much money you give. Doesn't matter how much time you stand in the church preaching. Doesn't matter how big the church is. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay? Well, I gave more than you. Doesn't matter. My house bigger than yours. Doesn't matter. That's not salvation. Okay? And he just said, I did not understand the gospel of grace. There is only one gospel. Okay? Now, furthermore, what he just admitted, on top of not being saved, he just admitted that he was not called, okay? <laughs> only God, God only calls saved people to preach to the lost. He doesn't call lost people to, to preach to the lost. He calls saved people to preach to the lost, okay? Let's look at this and look at this very, very closely. <clears throat> Portion of scripture we're going to read says this, okay? This is in Romans chapter 10. If thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved, Okay? For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. All right? Okay? Confession by faith, Jesus Christ. Okay? We're not saved by works. We're saved by that grace of Jesus Christ through faith. Verse 11. For the scripture said, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Okay? 
So far, so good. Not a shame. Well, we're going to get to the point now. Now, verse 12. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. It doesn't matter who you are. You call upon Jesus Christ through faith in believing and make that confession. He will save you. Okay. Right. Now, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 14. How then should they call on him in whom they have not believed? Okay. How should they call on him in whom they have not believed? Believe in who? The Jesus Christ of this grace. The Jesus Christ of this faith. The Jesus Christ that grants us this grace by faith, not of works. Okay. How should they call on him in whom they have not believed? Is the Jesus Christ that you were worshiping, is he a, a Jesus Christ of works or is he the Jesus Christ of grace? Well, you didn't know anything about the gospel of grace. Your gospel is of works. Your gospel is of tithing. Okay, now let's go further. And how should they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how should they hear without a preacher? Okay, now, it says, how can people hear about this gospel of grace without a preacher? But in order for the preacher to preach a gospel of grace, he has to know about the gospel of grace to preach it. So the gospel that you're preaching is the gospel of tithe and the gospel of works. It's not the gospel of grace. You never was preaching the gospel of grace because you did not know of the gospel of grace. Let's go one, one, one scripture further. Okay. All right. And, and how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Question. Do God send preachers to preach the gospel of grace who do not know that the gospel of grace exists? Do not know anything about the gospel of grace? Okay, so how can he send you unless you know about the gospel of grace first? And how can you know, how can you not know about the gospel of grace if you're not saved by the gospel of grace? Therefore, if you have never been saved about the God, through the gospel of grace and know about the gospel of grace, you're certainly not going to teach it. Verse 15 again, and how should they teach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. All right, gospel of peace. You can, you can take risks. Your, your mind can be at ease because you know you've been saved by grace. Now you have peace. Right? But gospel of works is not a gospel of peace because you got to keep working for it. Well, I got to make sure I give. I got to make sure my talent's on point. I got to make sure. No, that's not the gospel of peace. The gospel of grace is the gospel of peace. All right? And bring glad tidings of good things, good things, good things. Okay? He just admitted by not knowing anything about the. He was just being confronted with the gospel of grace. All right? He just said, not only that I'm not saved, he just said I was not called because God only calls ministers to preach who have already been confronted, who have already accepted the gospel of grace. Because that is only one gospel that God has allowed or accepted. Any other gospel is another gospel that the Bible talks about that we are not supposed to accept or follow because it is not the true gospel of Jesus Christ. OK, so I think that point has went over the head of many that just listened to him. He just admitted that he was not called to preach. I won't apologize because if it wasn't for me going down that route, I would have never ended up where I am right now. Okay, it's it's all down here from here. And this is why it's important to show things like this. Uh, I want to make it clear that this is a confession. This is not an apology. How do we know? He said it outright. This is not an apology. Okay, it is a confession is I did this. Okay, I did this. Well, did, did you break my house? Yes, I did it. That's a confession. Uh, did you shoot the guy? Yes, I did. It. That's a confession. An apology is saying that I was wrong, and I'm I'm sorry that I did. I, I didn't I didn't mean to shoot them. I'm, I'm sorry that I killed them. I, I'm sorry that I stole your television, sir. I thought, so a confession is just admitting that you did it. This is a confession, not an apology. He said plainly, I do not apologize. I won't, I won't apologize, apologize because, because if it wasn't, wasn't for me going, going down, down that route, I would have never ended up where I am right now. Okay. He said in the plain English. This is not my opinion. Okay. Now, what's even more appalling is the reason why he doesn't apologize. He said plainly again in his own words. This is not Brown. Uh, I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't do it. Didn't do what? Fleece the people. Lie to the people. I wouldn't be a multimillionaire. I wouldn't have this big ministry. I wouldn't have this mansion. I wouldn't have a jet. I wouldn't have a Rolls Royce. Why? If I didn't lie and flee to the people, I do not apologize. All right. Uh, and that's an appalling reason not to apologize because that's a reason to apologize for fleecing the people, for stealing the money, for lying to them. Or let's say you was in error, that you was in error all this time. It doesn't change the fact that the people that you took the money from or 
in a situation, some of them in a worse situation than they would have been if they had not been for you, you, your teachings and your ministry. No, sir. No, sir. You're dead wrong here. You absolutely need to apologize. You need to apologize to every elderly person who took their uh, social security check. All right. And, and tied it to your church or to your ministry or for your mansion or for that big car and, 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 and for, for your for your plane and went hungry that night. you having barely enough money to make ends meet. No, sir. You need to apologize for every child of a member who missed out on college or college education and, and, and doing some menial job now because their parents put their tuition money in the offering plate that you said they had to do in order to be blessed by God in order to be saved instead of sending their children to college. No, sir, you, you need to apologize to the people that was on the bus who couldn't save for a car, all right? They, they, they couldn't get one because they were tied in their money to the offering plate while you rolled past them in your Rolls Royce and wouldn't even pick them up and have a second thought about the fact why they were on the bus or walking. No, sir, you owe a lot of people an apology. And it's beyond reason that you sit, sit there and think that you don't. Okay, that you don't. All right, you, you owe an apology to every person, every, every member that got divorced because one of the spouses were, were a member of your church, and instead of paying the light bill, the water bill, the gas bill, they tied it into your offering plate. They had many, many fights about this. Eventually, split it up because this person who uh, uh, that believed your doctrine and your teaching believed it so much they had rather tie it to your church than take care of their families. No, sir. You an apology to a lot of people. And for you to sit there and think that you don't says a lot about your character and something that's still not right in your soul. But I will say that I have no shame at all at saying to you, throw away every book, every tape, and every video I ever did on the subject of tithing. Yeah, but you should be ashamed. You should, you should be. You should be embarrassed. You should be embarrassed that uh, all the people, all the books and all the tapes and all the materials that you sent out there, that you're saying that the people need to send, send back. No, no, that should be embarrassing. That, that should be something that you're ashamed of. That after 30 years, all this material that's out there, all this false doctrine and false teaching that you have taught it, it has been out there. Now, there's nothing you can do about it as far as uh, taking, it, taking all that material back. You're right. They should. Uh, mail it back. I mean, they, they just should get rid of it. No, no, I said it right the first time. They should mail it back. Okay, and we're going to get to the reason why right now. Let's talk about restitution. <clears throat> let's talk about restitution. In the Bible, there's a principle called restitution. And in this principle about restitution, when you have wronged somebody, basically in this case, stolen from them, took him by, by deceitful means or by force. Okay, now not just by force, but by deceitful means as well that you restore that which you took when you come to the conclusion that you were wrong or when you want to apologize or when you confess, not only do you say, I'm sorry, and back in the Old Testament, you would go to the priest and do whatever you were required to of the priest, you restore that which you have falsely taken or deceitfully taken. It's called restitution. Let's just read what the scripture have to say and I'll just let the scripture speak for itself. Exodus 22 and one. If a man steal an ox or a sheep and kill it, or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. Now, he then took one ox, right? Or one sheep, all right? And he, ki he killed it or he sold it. So when he's found out, all right, he, he can't give it back because it's gone, it's, it's dead. It says he shall restore five for one or four for one restitution, okay? Now, Exodus chapter. 22, verse 3. If the sun be risen upon him, there should be blood shed for blood, for he should make full restitution. If he have nothing, he shall be sold for his death. Now, the thief caught, you know, he don't, he, he don't have enough to make the restitution that the Bible outlines he should make, right? He said he should be sold. Sold into what? He should be sold into slavery for his death. To serve out the the, the money or the, the, the time or, or the value of whatever he had took. Verse 4. If the theft be certainly found in his hand alive, and if people find, find it in his hand alive, he, he caught red-handed, 
All right. Whether it be an ox or an ass or a sheep, he shall restore double. You just don't give back the one. You give back double of what you took. OK. All right. Uh, let's, let's find more scriptures in the Bible. It talks about restitution. Leviticus chapter six, verse one. <clears throat> And the Lord should, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, If a soul sin and commit a trespass against the Lord, and lie unto his neighbor and that which was delivered him to keep, or in fellowship, or anything taken away by violence, or have deceived his neighbor, now, for whatever reason, this man has his neighbor's goods. He says he could have did it by force, he could have did it by deception, by lying to him, he could have did it by fellowship. Hey, hey, buddy, why don't you let me borrow this? But then he keep it. All right, all right. So verse three or have found that which was lost, or another example is a person that found something that was lost and lied concerning it. Then the owner came by, hey, have you seen my goat? No, I ain't seen it. All right, all right. So he lied concerning it and swears falsely in any of all these that a man do it sinning therein, all right, they're saying all these things are sin, then it shall be because he has sinned and is guilty that he shall restore that which he took violently away, okay, you know, the minister didn't do it violently. No, no, no. But what does it say? Or the thing which he have deceitfully, deceitfully gotten. Uh -huh. mm. Uh huh. Not only violence. He said, or the thing which he have deceitfully gotten by deceit. Or that which was delivered him to keep. Or the lost thing which he found. Or all that about which he have sworn falsely. All right. And shall add the fifth part more thereto. All right. He should add unto it in principle. He give it the thing back and he should add a fifth part more unto it. All right. Now, I hear what a lot of people are saying. Well, Brown, this is Old Testament. Everything you read is Old Testament. You know, we don't, we, we don't, we don't, we shouldn't expect that of people today. I'm glad you brought that up. <clears throat> when we look at <clears throat> scripture, we see this in the New Testament. And it talks about somebody who was uh, rich, all right, and he got it from from ill-gotten gain. He's, he's he's a publican, tax collector. You know, he go up there. You owe so much taxes. He, you owe three three hundred. He tell you owe five hundred. Okay, right. what he do? He pocket the rest of the money. All right. Sometimes the the thing that he wrote was so high that people would lose their land or lose their positions or their property. And guess what? He would keep that. All right. That's why people didn't like publicans. They didn't like tax collectors because they were dishonest. They kept pocketing for themselves. Well. In, in, in uh, scripture, we see this written, verse 2, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among publicans, and he was rich. Hmm, sound familiar? And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature, little short guy, all right? Crowd, crowd all around Jesus, all the time, crowding around Jesus, all right? He wanted to see Jesus. Verse four, and he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. No, Jesus was coming. I want to see him. Let me climb a tree. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying, that he is going to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. This guy's a thief. This guy's a liar. This, this, this guy is, is a bad guy. All right. Why is Jesus staying with him? That's what they're saying. All right. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by a false accusation, I will store him fourfold. Hmm. Did Zacchaeus understand the principle of restitution? Was he really repent, repentant? Was he really sorrowful about the things he had done when he met Jesus, when he really had an encounter with Jesus? Yeah. Did Jesus ask him to do this or did he volunteer and say, you know what? I need to make it right. I need to make it right. Now, I'm looking to the camera and I'm asking not only the person, <laughs> the man of the hour, <laughs> I'm asking everybody and anybody out there, if you're truly repentful and you know the person that you have uh, stolen from, you know the people who you have done wrong, a lied to, and you say, Lord, I'm sorry, did you take the steps to make it right to restore that which you have taken? 
right? That's why I'm saying I, I don't, I don't, I don't like just focusing on people. I like to focus on the principles in the Bible, the scriptures in the Bible, whatever, because it goes more than just him. It goes, goes further than that. And speaking of which, talking about tithing, it goes more than just him. Anybody, any minister that teaches tithing is a requirement for a New Testament believer is telling you something that simply is not true. It is false. All right. Anybody teaching that is for a believer today, a, a Old Testament, a, a, a Old Testament a principle for Old Testament people is telling you that a new covenant believer needs to tie is required to tie is telling you something that's untrue. Now, whether he's lying or in error, I'm not here to, to, to argue. The fact is he's wrong. All right. Again, not not just for, uh, for for anybody, for anybody. Any teacher that's teaching that is wrong, and he's stealing God's money and the congregation's money. Why? Because it does not belong. That that giving does not belong to him, right? And he's taking the money from them under false pretenses, right? You're cursed with a curse, Malachi, all right? Malachi chapter three, verse eight. No, you're not cursed with a curse. No, you're not under a curse. You're under the blessing of Jesus Christ if you're his, his true servant, right? Now, it's up to us to study the word for ourselves. I keep saying this over and over again. It's about scripture. It's about the doctrine. It's about the principles of God. It's not about people because if you expose one false teacher today, three more rise up tomorrow, okay? Let's Christians learn the Bible, learn the gospel, learn scripture and follow it. Now, if somebody's sorrowful, there's scripture for that. We got an example of what somebody who's truly sorrowful would do, okay? Now, in the Old Testament, you, you add four or five times. Uh, 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 all uh, Zacchaeus said, I give half. Okay, what about half? What about something? The ministry is totally debt free. We owe nobody nothing. We didn't need to get no PPPH and all or whatever the plan was. We didn't need to get none of that because we had already lifted our hands up before God. He would take, take care, care of us, the possessor of heaven and earth. And that's what God wants out of all of us. Let, let me take, take care, care of you. I got a suggestion. How about, okay, uh, he talked about how much money that he had today. Good. Glad you have it. Wow. You got more to restore. Okay. Uh, how about everybody that bought a tape, a book, or anything from the ministry let them mail it in with their address and you send them a refund. How about that? How about that for restitution? God bless you. I love you with godly love. Amen. Heavenly Father, Father God, Lord, we just thank you so much for the, the message. Lord, we pray that, that we be repentful people, oh Heavenly Father, when we do others wrong, Heavenly Father. And if we find out later that we were wrong, Lord, that we, we come and admit it, first of all, to you. And second of all, to them, and do the best we can to make it right, oh, Heavenly Father. For just saying you, you're sorry to people does not make things right. Or when they are um, in destitute shape or what you did caused them heartbreak or what you did caused them uh, financial ruin, oh, Heavenly Father. It is important that we do the things necessary to make things right, oh, Heavenly Father. We pray that we have that type of heart in us. We love you with godly love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.